Are you ready to make your bedroom ADHD friendly? Here's some simple hacks that you can use right now. Have you ever walked into a room and you just feel cramped? Like you look around and there's just not a lot of space in there at all. And so you just don't feel like you can get comfortable in that environment because of the fact that you look around and you're like, man, I got my bed over here, my desk over here, my chair, recliner over here. I even have a, a couch in the room. I've got all this stuff just all around the room, all this bulky furniture within the room. And that just takes up so much space. All these things just take up a lot of space. And which of these things do you actually need in your room besides a bed? You need all these other things in there. Maybe you have a lap desk and you don't use your other desk anymore. Like you never say your desk anymore. You just have a lap desk. You use that all the time. So can the desk be moved to another room or maybe you just need to get rid of it because you never use it anymore. Or do you actually need the sofa in this room? Or do you actually need like a big recliner in the room? All these things take up a lot of space. And so you don't want to walk into a room that is all cramped, that doesn't have any space left because all these things are in there, but you have to organize everything around these bulky items in the room. And so now those things that you want in your room, you can't because these things are taking up so much space. So then you have to figure out, okay, how can I really make sure that these are the essential things that I need and these other things I can think about getting rid of because I can just survive without them, not in my bedroom. And here's something else. When I got diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 40, I didn't know a thing about it, right? I had to learn everything about it. And one of the first things I learned is that it's very hard to get to sleep when you have ADHD. That's because you lay down, you try to get relaxed and you never truly get relaxed. And maybe you're laying down and you're thinking about something and you're thinking about all the things that you need to do during the day, just and everything you need to do tomorrow. And then just random thoughts and all these things are going all around at the same time. And that's happened to me. I have been in the bed, just looking up at the ceiling because I have all these things I'm thinking about and then I don't actually get to sleep. And one of the things that makes this even harder is having a TV in your room because a TV is one big distraction and you have to focus to try to get to sleep, right? to kind of get in bed, relax yourself and just not think about anything. But if you have ADHD and you're thinking about all this stuff and then you're watching TV and getting more stuff to think about, it's going to be even harder to go to sleep. And another thing is now we have the streaming services and you can binge everything. So what you'll do is you'll find your show, right? You find that show and you're like, this is an awesome show. And you think, I'm just going to watch one episode, but then you binge like five episodes and you intended to go to bed at 10 o'clock and now it's two o'clock. And then if you ever been in that situation as well as where you're trying to watch your show, you fall asleep. I've done this. I fell asleep. I come back. I wake up. I look the TV still on. I try to go back and watch the episode I was originally trying to watch and then I'll fall asleep again and then I'll wake up again and I'll finally think, okay, I'm going to go to bed. And then I'm thinking about everything that happened in the show. So it's still distracting me, even though I've already decided I'm going to bed. I know I need to go to bed, but there's still this distraction. But anyway, the point is having a TV in your bedroom can be a very bad thing because of all those reasons. And the other thing about it, a TV generally takes up a huge amount of space in your bedroom. So you could be using that space for something else that you really want in there that you are like, Hey, this is essential. I really need it in here. But now you have to figure out, okay, my TV's there. It might take up a whole wall, you know, a part of a wall and you can't use that for anything else. So now you got to kind of organize around that and try to figure out where everything's going to go. So those are the reasons that I don't have a TV in my bedroom anymore, because when I get ready to go to bed, I don't need help staying up. <laughs> I think most people are in that situation. Don't need help staying up. I need help actually going to sleep. And here's another place that might be a huge issue when you have ADHD and have a bedroom is your closet. And the reason is because you can just have a closet clutter up so quickly and just not realize that at the time, because you might buy something new and you keep buying new stuff and putting it inside your closet, new clothes, new shoes, whatever it is. And then you never get rid of the old stuff. And then I'd be even in a situation where I buy something new and I have the old stuff in there and it's just so full. You can't, you can't really move the stuff to the side anymore. That's how full it is. Like you're just struggling to move it to the side and then find a place for the new stuff, realizing eventually that, oh, I have way too much stuff in this closet. And you might be in that same situation. There's too much stuff in your closet. 
And that can be a major issue when you have ADHD because when you look at clutter and see clutter, it just becomes a situation where you just feel like this is a big task. I don't know what's even in there. And then again, if you're trying to find whatever you're trying to look for, for the day to get ready or go to an event or whatever it is, and you're trying to find the outfit and you don't know exactly where it is in the closet and the closet is really full of a lot of different stuff, then it's much harder to go in there and actually find it and then decide even just going through there and trying to decide what to wear just by looking is going to be much harder as well. So that is a one major thing in a room that you probably need to take a look at and see is my closet the way I need it to be? And can I just go in there, look around and find exactly what I need? And this does not just apply to clothes. It can apply to shoes, to board games, to whatever else is in your closet. And you might get to the point to where you have just so many, way too many of whatever it is. And you end up taking up all the closet space, like down the bottom or top, wherever. And then you have to figure out, okay, I don't have any more closet space here. And you start having to move stuff to other rooms. <laughs> out of your bedroom closet to other rooms because you have no more space in your actual closet in your bedroom. And so you never want to get it to that point. So that's why it's really important for you to go through and kind of get rid of stuff or move stuff around and make it so that it's easy to see and find everything in your closet. And sometimes that gets really cluttered is your kitchen counter, your bathroom counter, maybe your desk. Like we think on our desk, we need the stapler the label maker, the ruler, the calculator, and just whatever else, all these things on our desk at once. We might even have a plastic cup that we never drink out of at our desk. It's just like a decoration that we got somewhere. It's also on the desk, right? And so we have all these things on the desk and then we can't see everything because it gets really cluttered as we keep adding things to it, thinking we need this or that or whatever and it just becomes a place to where we look at it and we can't tell where anything is or where most things are. We're trying to find all these different things and that takes time. You don't want to have it in that kind of condition, right? Because out of sight, out of mind, you might not see the thing that you actually need just by looking down at it. But if it is a clear flat surface where everything is just the essentials on there. It's much easier to find exactly what you need. And here's something else. You might have something in your bedroom that you're like, hey, I know there's a place for this. You know, it's awesome. It's cool. I really want to actually be in the room somewhere. But after a little while, you just decide, I have no idea where this thing goes. Or you might even have something in your bedroom that just, you know, you think it belongs in there, but you realize, you know, this doesn't go to anything actually in here. Why do I have this thing in here and why is it still here? You know, so you might be in either of those situations in that situation, you realize whatever it is does not belong in your bedroom. Now it could belong somewhere else in the house, like a TV remote again, that goes to another room, another TV or something like that. But it might just be something that you bought for furniture or decor or whatever. And you're just like, I have no place for it. It just doesn't have a home here. It might have a home somewhere in my house or apartment, but just not in my bedroom. But if it doesn't have a place anywhere in your home, then it might be time to think about getting rid of that thing, whatever it is. And that goes into decluttering your bedroom and your home at that point. But you don't want to have things in your bedroom that don't have a home at all, because then they're just going to sit out somewhere and then become clutter and then you're not going to have as much space as you should because you have this thing there that doesn't belong there at all. And even something as small as a TV remote still takes up space that you could be using for something else also that is small. And something that's really good for your bedroom is to keep things visual. You want to be able to see things very easily and find things very easily. And so when you have ADHD, you don't want anything in front of anything else. You want to be able to see everything, but at some point, that might actually happen, which is you start putting things out to make sure they're visual and you put too much stuff out to where it becomes cluttered. Now you have too many things out that you're trying to make sure that you can see. And so then things end up behind other things and then things end up to where you can only partially see them and that may not help either. And so you want to make sure that you do not put a huge amount of things on a shelf. You don't want things hidden that you need. You don't want anything essential that you really have to have hidden somewhere to where you cannot see it. And so that's why you need to make sure that everything is where you can see it and you don't have it all cluttered up. And something else to think about is that sometimes we just walk into our bedroom and realize 
we have no more space there there's nothing else there everything is in this place or it's just cluttered and we just look around and say we can't add anything else to this right if we do it's just not going to be comfortable in here but have you actually looked at your wall and looked at the space there because you can use that wall space for a lot of different things you can add shelves on there and then put stuff on the shelf and now you see it and it's easy to access as well now don't put so much stuff on the shelf that it actually becomes cluttered but you do have that you can add hooks to the wall if you want to do that and that's another way that you can use that space up but the thing is is now you're able to take stuff from somewhere else and put it on your wall and that's going to clear up space down in the lower areas and then it looks like it's more spacious and more organized in general and so that is a very good thing when you have gone and you're trying to figure out okay how in the world can i find some more space and that can be super frustrating because you know that you want to add some other things to here but you just don't have a way to do it and then this can solve that problem and here's something else to think about that can be really good and really bad at the same time is we go out and buy decor for our room and that's great you know you want a certain vibe and everything for your bedroom and everything that is good but if you buy way too much decor that can be bad you're buying six pieces and seven pieces and you go to your bedroom and you try to figure out where all this stuff is gonna go and you just don't have space at all for all this stuff maybe three pieces but not six pieces right <laughs> So now you're trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with that point? When you buy a piece of decor and bring it into your bedroom, you want to make sure you get rid of something else out of your bedroom or even out of your home if you don't need it in your bedroom anymore. But you don't want to just add stuff and keep adding stuff and adding stuff and not get rid of anything because then you know you might just, again, not have any space. Now, this is much easier if you have a replacement for something, right? Hey, I've got a new bed. I want to replace that bed with a different bed. Cool. You bring in the new one. You get rid of the old one. Have a, you know, a chair in the room that I want to get rid of. Replace it. That's cool. You get the new one. Replace the old one. But you don't want to just keep buying new stuff and never actually getting rid of the old stuff. And so that is why it's very important to make sure that you are just not buying too much decor because that's going to make your room look more cluttered and we don't want our room to look more cluttered we want it to look more spacious more organized and everything and you know a lot of times clutter just ends up in the most unexpected place like we just don't expect or just think about looking in this place for something we need to find or something we need and that a lot of times is under the bed we just have dropped something rolled under the bed somehow it got under there and we just never even think about looking under there because we look everywhere else but never under the bed and so there might be things under there. And so you go down, look under there eventually, and then you find stuff. Or you might find trash or whatever down there too. But you then have a chance to clean that stuff out and figure out, okay, is this something I need? Is this something I need to throw away or whatever? But you need to kind of make it periodically a chance to go under and look under the bed just to make sure there's nothing under there. Now you can do something cool, which is actually get under the bed storage. And that way you get a container or you have some place under the bed that you can store things to where you can then put those things away under the bed. And then that might even jog your memory. Hey, I've got this box under the bed. Let me see if I put that stuff in there. But the other advantage of this is it keeps things organized under the bed as well. Now here's something else that's really good, or at least I think really good for ADHD is to go the minimalist route if you want to. And this is where you just keep the very essentials in your room. So for example, you might have just a couple of work outfits. You don't want to have any extra at all. You just had these couple, or you might have, you know, just this many pillows or this many sheet covers or this many CDs or whatever. I don't know if people even use CDs anymore, but the thing is you're just using just the essentials. Now you don't have to go full minimal in your room. What you want to do is you can say, Hey, I just want to do it with clothes i just want to do it with suits i just want to do it with board games i just want to do it with this or that or whatever and that's okay too but the thing about it is whatever you choose to go minimal on it makes things really easy but when you do you do notice that things go a little bit quicker because you don't have as many things in your room now this is not the only video i have on actually doing and making things adhd friendly and I have another video that goes over how to make your bathroom ADHD friendly as well. And you can watch that video right here.